awkward wave. Awkward wave. <laughs> I am not claustrophobic, not in the physical sense. You could fold me up and stick me in a glove compartment and I'd be okay. I'm a yoga. However, bind me with social norms, expectations, and impossibilities, and I will snap. When you ask people around me in my life to use one word to describe me, most of them will say fearless. Fearless because I speak my mind, fearless because I stand here and I'm mildly nervous, fearless because I question my boss in pub and, and private, but have called him out in public on numerous occasions. Fearless because I say things in front of C-suites as a lowly software engineer and live to regret it. And sometimes not fearless because I borrowed cars before being able to drive legally <laughs> because I smoked in the boys' bathroom. Because at the age of 15, after only snowboarding for one year, I hiked Tuckerman's Ravine and dropped the head wall and lived to tell the tale. And is, my, is fearlessness my passion? Am I actually fearless? I am not fearless. I'm actually scared shitless most of the time. My passion is, are those boxes and breaking them down. My passion is self-expression because like Ashley said, it's exhausting not to be yourself. And I did a short experiment in college. There was a boy, I really liked this boy for whatever reason. I don't remember his name, so clearly very significant. Um, but I wanted to date him and his type was the demure, polite, sweet girl, which I so obviously am not. Um, so I, I tried, I lengthened my skirt, I took out my piercings, I brushed my hair down from this, the spiky parakeet look. And I lasted for three days. I lasted three days of saying please and thank you and speaking politely in soft voices. And it was exhausting the fact that Ashley did it for an entire project up to her vacation makes her def definitely more resilient than me. But that's something that I've battled against a lot of the time because who are you to tell me because you're black, you can't swim or because I'm a girl I can't do math. I have an example from just the other day. My organization got upturned on its head and my CTO told me in not so many words that my new mission is to fix the medical billing system in the United States. No big deal. Terrifying, right? Like who does this? And I call my best friend and I tell him about how insane my CTO is and his wife, orthopedic surgeon in the background laughs at the impossibility of it. And the minute I hear her laughing, I'm like, fuck you, Jess, I'm gonna do it now. <laughs> because you can't bind us. And my passion has, has turned into a purpose where I just don't wanna break down my boxes. I want you all to be comfortable to step out of your comfort zone because I do something crazy, which makes it that much easier for do you do something a little bit, maybe less crazy, maybe even more. The point is I hiked up that head wall. I was terrified every step of the way, just for you two who aren't from New Hampshire. The hike is so steep that you kick in your boots and your knee touches the snow because that's the steepness. And then you come up to a cornice that hangs up overhead. You climb that. And you drop that down and I'm standing at the age of 15 and the peak, and I'm like, how do you get down? And they're like, oh, just do 180s all the way. No big deal. I'm like, I have no idea how to do it 180. It was terrifying. Did I die? I did not. Could I have died? Oh, absolutely. I didn't break a bone. I didn't tear an ACL. I didn't, I didn't hurt myself in that terrifying, horrifying drop. I did break a bone jumping, a little jump that I've hit since so many times over again. I did tear an ACL here, here at Alta doing something way more benign than Tuckerman's Ravine. The point is you can get hurt and you can be scared all the time from so many different things, but that's not a reason to not to do them. If it's something that's true to you, you have to do it. Do it scared, but do it.